In this session, I'm going to explain how you can read parallel execution plans. My name is Maria Colgan. I'm one of the product managers for the Oracle database, and I'll be your host. So how does parallel execution actually work? Well, when a user connects to an Oracle database, a process or background session is created for that user. And if they were to issue queries serially, it's that process or session that would execute the query on their behalf. But if the user was actually to issue a statement in parallel, then that process or session becomes something called the query coordinator. And it isn't actually going to execute the query on their behalf. What it'll actually do is allocate some parallel server processes from a global pool, and it'll be those parallel server processes that will actually execute the query. Remember, each parallel server process is its own session. And so they'll do all of the scanning, filtering, and join operations. And then once they're finished with it, they'll just send the results to the query coordinator who may do a final step of aggregating those results before returning to the end user. Now, all of the communication back and forth between the parallel server processes and the QC are done using in-memory buffers that are either coming out of your large pool or your shared pool, depending on how your Oracle database has been configured. So let's look at a query and see what actually happens. Here, I'm looking for the most expensive order we ship by air. And so we are going to allocate parallel server processes. They are going to do the work. So they will divide up the line orders table, each of them taking a separate chunk of that table. They'll apply the where clause predicate, do the initial aggregation of the uh, orders to find the most expensive orders in the rows they've scanned. And then they'll send those results to the query coordinator will do the final aggregation and return it to the end user. So let's take a look now at what the actual execution plan for this SQL statement looks like. As you can see, the query coordinator has written its name in the plan right there on line two. What that indicates is that all of the operations that occur above that will be executed by the query coordinator. But the majority of the plan or the rows below that are executed by the parallel server processes. So let's take a look at what's happening in this plan line by line. So the first step in this plan is actually the last entry in the plan table, line six, table access storage full on line orders. The keyword storage there appearing because I happen to run this demo on an Exadata environment. But what this tells me is the parallel server processes divided up the full table scan among themselves uh, in order to process the query. Row five of the table actually tells us how the parallel server processes divided up the, the scan of the line order. In this case, we see it's PX block iterators. So they divided up the line orders table by database blocks, each one of them taking a different range of those database blocks. And I'll explain in more detail how the work is divided up among the parallel server processes in just a moment. But once they've finished scanning and filtering the line orders table, what they'll do is that they'll actually move on to line four of the execution plan where we see the sort aggregation. So for each parallel server processes, after it's applied the where clause predicates, it will then find the max order. Once they found the max order for their rows, they'll send those results to the query coordinator. And again, I'll talk more about distribution in a little bit. But the query coordinator receives those rows and then does the final sort to find the max among those max values, which it then returns to the end user. So how is that work divided up among the parallel server processes? Well, the data is divided into what we call granules in order to be able to balance the workload across all of the processes. And those granules can either be a block range or by partition. Now, each parallel server process will be initially allocated just one granule, and it, once they complete that work, they may be allocated more, depending on how much data needs to be scanned. Now, you'll see exactly which process has been used by looking at the line just above the data access in the execution plan. So whether it's PX block iterator or PX partition iterator. Let's turn our attention now to a slightly more complicated SQL statement. In this case, we're aggregating up the revenue by part key. And because it is a more complicated plan, we're actually going to use two sets of parallel server processes. 
one set that's called the producers and one set that's called the consumers. And the query coordinator will all allocate both sets. The producers will begin scanning the line orders table just as they did before, apply the where clause predicate and return the results to the consumers. The consumers will then aggregate up the results they receive from the producers looking for the total revenue by part key. The consumers will then send the, their results to the query coordinator who will do the final aggregation and return the results to the end user. So let's take a look at what the plan looks like now. Again, we see the query coordinator has written its name in the plan on line one. And as before, all of the steps that occur beyond that will be executed by the query coordinator. Below that, all of the steps will be executed by the parallel server processes. But which set of processes do which steps? Well, I'll show you a number of different ways to determine that in the execution plan. But for now, take it from me, rows five, six, seven, and eight are the producers. Rows two, three, four are the consumers. So again, it starts at the bottom of the, the plan here. We're gonna access the line orders table. We're gonna access it using, again, block iterators. So that means the parallel server processes will have divided up the line order table by database blocks. Once they've scanned and filtered those rows, they'll do an initial group by, in this case, a hash group by, to try and find the sum of the revenue by part key for the rows they've scanned. Once they've completed that aggregation, they're going to send their partial result to the consumers and the consumer parallel server processes will then receive those results. That's what you see on line four. And once they've got the results, they'll do a second group by so that we've gotten the final wrap up. And when they're ready, they'll send that to the query coordinator. And then the query coordinator will simply return it to the end user. So there are actually six different methods used to distribute data among the parallel server processes. The first is hash, where a hash function is applied to the value of the column we are distributing on. And in our example, that would have been part key. And then the data is distributed to the consumers working on the corresponding hash partitions. Round robin is where we randomly but evenly distribute data among the consumers, very similar to how you would probably give out candy to children. The third method is broadcast. This is where we're going to send the complete result set to all of the consumers. And this is typically done when the result set is very small. The fourth method is range. Individual parallel server processes will work on different date ranges and each row is sent to the consumer working on the range it belongs to. When this method is used, the query coordinator doesn't need to sort the results it receives from the parallel server processes. It'll simply just present those results in the correct order to the user. The fifth option is partitioning key distribution, where individual parallel server processes are working on different partitions of a table. The producers will match each of the scanned rows to the consumer based on the partitioning column. Now, if you see the word local at the end of the distribution method, it indicates that this is occurring on a rack system and that an optimization has kicked in where we're only going to distribute the rows between producers and consumers on the same rack node. The sixth and final distribution method is hybrid hash. Now, this is a new adaptive distribution method that was introduced in 12.1 to avoid data skews. So actually what happens is we haven't decided the distribution method at parse time, but during execution, a stats collector is inserted in front of the producers to see if the number of rows to be distributed actually matches our original estimate. If the number of rows produced meets or exceeds the threshold, then a hash distribution will be used. But if the number of rows is less than the threshold, then the broadcast distribution method will actually be used. That way we always get the best distribution method for the actual number of rows being returned from the operation. Once the decision has been made on the initial execution of the SQL statement, all subsequent executions will use that distribution method and the stats collector will end up being a no-op. 
But what about the extra columns that appear in a parallel plan? What information do they show or share with us? Let's take a look at them. On the far right hand side of the plan, we see the PQ distribution column. This indicates what distribution method has been used by the parallel server processes when they're sharing information. The next column over is called in out and it indicates whether this step runs in parallel and if it was a single parallel server set or not. The first thing you may see is PCWP parallel combined with parent. And what this indicates is that the database performed this operation simultaneously with its parent step. In other words, it's like a pipeline function. Rows flowed straight from this operation into the next operation because they were all done by the same process. Next, you may see P to P. What that indicates is parallel to parallel and data is being sent from one parallel operation to another. Finally, you may see P to S or parallel to serial, and that's data being sent from parallel operations to a serial process. And ideally, this should only happen when we pass rows to the query coordinator. The last additional column added to the table is the TQ or table Q column. It's going to indicate if multiple sets of parallel server processes were used in this query. And in our example, we had two sets of parallel server processes used. Q100 indicates the producers or the first set of parallel server processes used, while Q101 indicates the consumers or the second set of parallel server processes used for this query. And that's how I knew which rows in the plan had been executed by the producers and which had been executed by the consumers. Hopefully parallel plans are no longer a mystery and you feel comfortable and confident in reading and interpreting a parallel execution plan. You can learn more about parallel execution and the optimizer on sqlmaria.com or by going to oracle.com, specifically the data warehousing section. Thanks for joining me.